Hello, this is Clemens Lama from Autotonic and in today's video I want to point at something that can be very beneficial when using Autotonic uh, in combination with a DAW. Let me tell in the beginning now that this video isn't about uh, a particular um, instructional video on how to use a, DAW, a, spe a specific DAW because in this case I am on a Mac and I am using Logic Pro as you can see here in the background but um, this video of course applies for all Windows users as well as all other uh, software uh, MIDI recording compatible hosts etc. So the video I want to do today is about um, a general concept more a the theoretical approach than uh, particular settings and uh, how to use Autotonic. So I wanted uh, to mind you thinking about uh, recording audio in a studio or in a um, in a studio si at situation where the uh, artist um, wants, for example, example um, have a reverb on his headphone mix or uh, uh, compressing uh, compression or EQ is used for the recording. Then in this case, um, it often or in most common sense, it is um, used a, a background track uh, which records the raw dry signal um, as a whole in the in the background and this um, of course is useful then later when uh, reprocessing the signal from scratch without any effects applied and um, what I wanted to point out here today is that we can do the same of course with autotonic so um, as when you we look at the um, the input and the output sections in within Autotonic, then we can see we have already our raw signal, which comes from our hardware MIDI keyboard controller, and uh, we have defined our output section, which is then the processed, the transposed signal. So we already are using two different signal paths here, and in this case with MIDI, uh, we are using the virtual and uh, the the MIDI keyboard ports. So the only thing that we would be necessary to do, however this might look for your specific situation with your specific DAW then, but the thing that uh, would have to be minded here then is of course to um, set up uh, somehow uh, the, the, the inputs as separate tracks that will be recorded at the same time in the background. And when then using Autotonic, um, I can record both si signals simultaneously. Let me uh, just record some random um, bars here. I do not have really a plan here. But let's of course do a few squee key switches here. Okay, whatever. So this should just uh, give us an example where we might could um, look now at the um, raw data with all the key switches here including included as well as the complete um, transposed final result. And when for example now playing back this Then we can either um, play back the, com the complete resulting um, signal or in other ways we could um, also re-trigger autotonic um, here. Including all the key switches and all the actions that uh, autotonic initially had received. And there, this opens your mind if you get, uh, get to the idea what I mean, that uh, you can actually use a complete raw signal and re-trigger autotonic uh, from scratch again and again and um, later afterwards also can edit um, the scales you used or can retranspose or modally trans retranspose um, your complete raw dry um, um, signal from scratch, as with audio. This was just one idea how you can use Autotonic. So by always keeping your raw unprocessed 
um, non-destructive signal, um, you can later always re-modify this uh, initial source and of course use the key switches for the um, key switching of your whole arrangement. Um, there's so much possibilities and we're just starting with it. Okay, thank you for watching and please like this video or subscribe to our channel and um, stay tuned. Thank you very much. Bye bye.